So, um, you're all very quiet this morning, aren't you? Have you noticed? You're all sort of... Nothing wrong with that, just I've noticed that. This morning, my three cats decided that the wild weather would make them go wild in the house this morning. They would not stop running around chasing each other. And it was because of the howling wind. It was, it was really got them energetic. For those who spend enough time talking to Joy or I about our three cats and, and would hear our weekly stories, especially at Noah's Ark, about how they, they entertain us and uh, keep us going like crazy. Um, uh, they were unbelievable this morning. It was just at that point I just went, please, can you calm down? Take no notice whatsoever, Carol. You're absolutely right. None whatsoever. And it's got nothing to do with the sermon. I just want to give you an idea. If animals can be wild and they know nothing, we can be wild. Amen? But it was a point, I'm trying to get ready, and I've got one of them. Toffee would not stop following me everywhere I went. It got to the point where I shut my bedroom door to get changed. He's scrabbling at the door, meowing. I had to let him in. Oh, bless his, bless his little cotton. He's 12. He's not getting any younger. Do you know what I mean? And he just wouldn't leave me alone. Just wouldn't leave me alone. He literally followed me wherever I went this morning. It was almost like, Daddy, I need to be near you. Yeah, we do go, Daddy. I'm sorry. We are, we are animal lovers. Daddy, I need to be near you. And I was sitting and I was thinking about it. And I thought, yeah. So, from my sermon last week, which, if you remember, was about anybody... Somebody? Do we get enough um, chance to talk to God? Could you say that slightly louder? Imagine you're one of my cats. <laughs> <laughs> Just to point out, that was your family acting over there. I won't say nothing. Do we get enough chance to talk to God? Do we get enough chance to talk to God? Okay, yeah, that's, that's true. Or do we give enough? Anybody else? Was that the... That's pretty much it, really. Turn off your mobile phones. Thank you. Read our Bible more. Okay. Read the Word more. Read the Word more, yeah. Timesheet of the time you spend. Yeah. Hey, do you get that one? Do a timesheet of where you really spend your time. That was all brilliant. Every single one. Do you know, I'm greatly encouraged because you've actually, that's brilliant. That's really encouraging. I even had somebody this week, a couple of people this week say, about your sermon, what does it look like? I'm thinking, you're processing my sermon days later? Wow, God's really at work. Amen, hallelujah. So who's done a timesheet? Um, I, I genuinely honest. There is this, 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 this. It, we're not sure if it's just a joke or it really happened. I'd like to believe it really happened. That there was a pastor who got newly brought into to to the church. Obviously, I'm not newly into the church, but he um, preached this fantastic sermon, and he ah, oh, people thought it was amazing, and it really worked, and they really thought about it. And then the following week, he preached a fantastic sermon exactly the same sermon as he preached the week before and it carried on for a few weeks keep preaching the same sermon until his leaders of the church dragged him into the office say look we think you're an amazing pastor you're a brilliant preacher you communicate really well but you're preaching the same sermon he said yep when you finally do what the sermon's about we'll move on to the next one <laughs> so why haven't you done a timesheet Oh, Martin, you've done a timesheet. Well done. Did it go well? It's, it's normal day-to-day -day things. I, I go into the gym, I'm taking Eva out for lots of walks, I'm doing talks for guide dogs, which is something I don't do a lot, but I enjoy doing it. Um, looking after my partner, she's had problems just lately with uh, other things. I'm not going to go deep things. And so therefore, day-to-day -day things I wouldn't normally do. I still spend a lot of time listening to my Bible, of course. I spend at least 25 minutes to a quarter of an hour every morning, or maybe longer, talking to God. Um, yeah, that's my time sheet. Uh, it's, it's not, um, it's not um, because I'm retired. A lot of people don't realise I'm 66, 67 this year. A lot of people don't realise this. So I'm now retired. My time sheet is a little bit laid back than whatever anybody else is. But... 
It's there. End of story. Thank you. But I know plenty of retired people who turn around, I can't believe where the day's gone. I've not done what I wanted to do today. I, I have somebody... Anybody else? So, I want to re-preach that again. Time sheet. Time sheet. You might be sitting there going, really? This is what we have to do for work. We have to clock in, clock out, or I have to... I have to do it for here. But it's because I want to know how I'm spending my, my time. Now, if I end up spending five hours doing administration work every day, that's not quite what a pastor's employed to do. So it's useful to do a timesheet. I want to recommend you do a timesheet. Actually break down your day. Actually look at how much time do you really spend being with the Lord? How many hours do you really spend watching TV? Yeah, go on. We've decided, yeah, that we're going to um, try and spend less time sitting with the TV, which is not very good, yeah, even though I spend a lot of time out walking, Julie doesn't. So we've decided now that we're going to spend at least half an hour a day, providing the weather is good, and take either out for a walk, a double walk. So that way we both get away from being indoors and away from that TV. Thank you. I, I want to say there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with TV. Uh, well, it depends on what's on the TV that could be wrong. Um, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. You know, Freeview. I don't scan beyond channel sort of two, three, one. Because once you scan below further onto that, it goes to channels that really one shouldn't be watching at all. Do I need to adultly describe them to you with triple X? So you do make very sure where you triple down. So it depends on what's on it. There's nothing wrong. Everything's in moderation. So I am going to bang on a little bit, and I want to talk about two things today. And this is all about spending time with God. And do you remember last year it was about, are you glad to spend time with Jesus? John uh, 20, 20. You know, the disciples in verse B were, B of, that were glad to spend time with Jesus. They were joyful when they saw him. They were enthusiastic when they saw him. So how enthusiastic have you been this week to spend time with God? To actually spend time sitting or walking or whatever in his presence, recognizing he's there. Or to use a good old phrase, I want to go and chill out what I end up doing is just watching TV for six hours. So, uh, two things I want to talk about, and this sort of progressed that into full diaries. Anybody have a diary? Anybody have the papyrus version of a diary? You know, the ones that you write in with a pen, yeah? Okay. Anybody have the mobile phone version of those? Yeah. Which one survives in the water longer? The paper version. I do love people who go, oh, I'm so sorry. I put it in my diary, which diary? My phone, and it didn't alert me. You see, I find when you look in a paper diary, you actually see what's going on. Anyway, just, just, just hilarious. Just, sorry, it's meant to be a joke. You're meant to laugh, haha. Oh, good. Full diaries. Um, we can live in a society and a culture that says you have to be busy. You have to be busy. You have to have come away from a day fulfilled thinking that you've achieved everything you're meant to do and you're meant to cram your diary full. If you work in the office or you work in the NHS or you work in a shop, you have to be busy apparently. You have to make sure you've got every little date and time filled up to the brim from the minute you walk in to the minute you leave home. And most businesses these days, and in my day back then, said you better also work an extra hour beyond the time that you're meant to leave to make yourself look good in front of the bosses. Yeah? You must be busy. So cram your diary full. Make sure that 
that every day and every morning that you've got something constructive you've done and you've filled up your day. Make sure you fill up your Saturdays as well and make sure you fill up your Sundays. Anybody not with me on this so far? And you can tell that by the question that normally gets asked is, how was your week? And I bet when you sit there and think, how was your week, you sort of talk about the things that you've done. Does that? And it's all about, well, I went to work, and I did this, and I cooked this dinner, and we went out with this set of people, or I, I had to do the bills, or do you know what I mean? You, you sort of do it about how your day, how busy it was. And normally you'll ask, and let's be honest, and let's be real with ourselves, most of us, when you turn around and say, how are you feeling? I'm tired because I've had a busy week. That tends to be the, yeah? It tends to be our reactions, doesn't it? Even if you're retired, you'll turn around and say, I'm tired because I've had a busy week. Full diaries. We tend to think we have to cram them up. and then So then when emergencies come across or relationships get interrupted, we don't have the time for them. We don't have time for the sudden uh, emergencies that occur that can suddenly distract us from doing our work. And then we've discovered we've got a backlog. And I've got to do some catching up. Why? Well, because I crammed my diary already. Sorry, this is not some self-confession about my, my, uh, my working week, and I want you to feel sorry for me. Um, but I have the same had the same mentality for years. And I'll come to some real stories uh, in this week just gone. But I want to look at Jesus just for a minute. That's useful to look at the Bible, isn't it, in the church? John chapter 11. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother, Lazarus, was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling them, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. Note those words, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. He stayed where he was for the next two days. He's just heard that one of his dearest friends is really, really sick. The sisters have called for him, and they're dear friends of Jesus as well. And basically, it's almost like, um, here's a text message. I'm unwell. Get here quick. And let's be honest. When you receive a text message from somebody who's unwell or sick, what's your normal reaction if you live within the area? You want to quickly go and see them, don't you? And, and the fact that it's come via a text, it all makes it so urgent. Because the minute you hear a ping on your phone, even if you're doing something else, what will you do? Grab your phone. You won't leave it to one side. No? I had an amazing encouragement. I got flashed up on my phone today at the amount of time spent on my screen. And I've dropped by 13% this week. Yeah, I, I was quite encouraged by that. I dropped by 13% this week by not looking at my phone. Now, actually, the drop is, is not particularly massive because I don't spend that time staring at it anyway. Does that make sense? But it was enough to say I've dropped 13%. Yes. On, uh, both Android and iPhone nowadays, you can see how much time you spend in each app as well. Oh, really? Yep. Wow, how many hours? <laughs> see, never, 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 no. So 47 minutes this morning on WhatsApp, 38 minutes this morning on you. I'm joking, I'm winding you up. So <laughs> Everybody else is going, oh, not as long. Oh, I spend a lot longer than that, I feel. <laughs> so, no, so you can. That's good, isn't it? Wow. Okay, being honest, how much do you think your YouTube length of time is? Your WhatsApp, especially those important WhatsApp messages you must receive. You know, smiley faces, have a blessed day, how are you? 
uh, you know, or I just want to, you know, uh, there's nothing, some WhatsApp messages come from there encouraging. It's a message from the Lord via somebody else. I'm not knocking them. But some of them you just think, politely and lovingly, really? I'm not in the mood for a bit of inane humor right now. I'm busy. Bear with me a second. So, where was I at now? I've lost track of where I was. Thanks very much, Marcelo. That's really helpful. <laughs> Hang on. Let me just check my account. Uh, <laughs> yeah, time spent. Just time spent in, in receiving uh, those texts. And you, you must distract yourself to look at them. And so therefore then you're thinking, and then so when you get a real text from somebody who's sick, etc., you just think, oh, I must jump on this. I, I remember a number of years ago when... Um, Facebook was at its absolute height and you know um, many many years ago somebody had posted uh, a message on Facebook uh, 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 saying how low they were feeling and, and they were uh, and they put some the way they worded it was some sense of and I'm so low um, I, it's just not worth living today it was that sort of message they posted on Facebook and and uh, anyway, so this sparked a frantic, somebody had read it, uh, and they just posted it up there, and people did the following. And it's, so they spent then this frantic lot of phone calls trying to track this person down. Uh, I was getting phone calls in the office from different people. Have you seen this mesh pastor? They're, they're, they're really, they're, oh, I think they're going to commit suicide. I'm being really honest. This person is no, you know, is not, not, not part of this church. But this is what's going to happen to them, blah, 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 blah. And we couldn't get on them on the phone. We couldn't get hold of them. This was like, we're all starting to pray frantically, really get involved. About two hours later, I got hold of the person. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. What do you mean you're fine? Well, I'm okay. Well, you posted a message a couple of hours ago on Facebook. That, oh, yeah, I was just feeling a little bit low at that point. I'm just feeling a bit miserable and... I just needed something just to sort of say it and pick myself up. And I was fine five minutes later. I then got into a meeting. So that's why I wasn't answering my phone. Now, hear me very carefully. There will be people that genuinely will do that and genuinely are absolutely at a low ebb and, and they need people. But the point being, this caused this ruction. And this is what happens with this instant messaging. Because we don't spend time processing our real feelings. We want to put it out there without thinking about, well, actually, if I give myself half an hour, maybe with God, I might feel a little bit better. Now, I mean, there's genuine depression. There's genuine grief. There's genuine, don't, don't hear me carefully. But for some of us, I think sometimes that's why I much prefer the face-to-face -face contact or the telephone call rather than this sort of almost anonymous, I've just posted it out for the whole world to see. So, of course, the immediate reaction is us to jump and get on with it. Now, here is Jesus getting a message, which wasn't by text, by the way, that your friend Lazarus is dying, sick, come. Sick meaning he's dying, come. And Jesus' reaction wasn't to jump on it, was it? It's going to sin. We're going to take a couple of days still doing stuff here because there's other things going on at the moment. I do not need to rush to my friend Lazarus. There's another place that Jesus done it as well. It's when Jairus, his daughter, is dying. So the sends for him, the temple leader, my daughter is dying, get to me. And Jesus starts making his way. But he didn't rush. He didn't jump in his car frantically and floor it, breaking the speed limit to get to the house. He strolled. And then a woman with bleeding for 12 years interrupts him. And he allows that to happen. He takes his time. Jesus didn't feel hurried to go and sort this out. You with me so far? Full diaries. We don't have space. Jesus never rushed. If you look at the, he never sped things up. The so things with our modern technology has great value, but it also makes us frantic in our minds. It makes us things like everything has to be dealt with too day in an instant and I would humbly suggest as Christians we've allowed our minds to become hurried 
We don't go at the pace that the Lord wants us to. We don't allow ourselves time to breathe and allow to God to intervene and to deal with. You with me so far? Okay. So I want to tell you two stories from this week that proves because the Lord's been speaking to me and I've been greatly challenged by this. So I looked at my diary on um, one, one story I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to be very vague in the story because it's highly confidential, okay? It's got nothing to do with internally church here, but it is c- confidential. So, Monday afternoon, I look at my diary for the next day, for Tuesday. Other than a meeting that was happening Monday night with the leadership, uh, Tuesday night with the leadership team, there was nothing else in my diary. I wasn't meeting anybody. I had nothing booked into my diary to see anybody during the day. My immediate thought was, oh, that's terrible. I'm not doing anything. What am I going to do? I can't cram this up. I've got to find somebody to meet. Not that there's not other things I could have done, but part pastoral care is caring for people. But I felt God go, it's fine. So then uh, I had a Friday, Monday night, I had a slightly later meeting uh, here with somebody. I'm, I'm taking a funeral tomorrow, and I was meeting with the representatives of the family to do with the funeral. After they had left, I decided just to double check my email before I left. It's about half past eight in the evening, just before I left, before I went go home and have dinner. So I just double checked my email. And I had an email from somebody external, who I know, I'm connected with, emailed me to say there is something that's happened that's quite, that's affected a wider group of people, and it's quite, and they don't know what to do, it's quite traumatic, any advice. So I emailed back, gave him a bit of advice, and said, but I'm really happy if you want me to, to come in as the chaplain to, to spend time with these people if you'd like me to. I, that's what I felt quite strongly by God to do that. So, point being, move on to the next day. I then literally get a, 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 a text from this person because I gave him my number. I said, text this if you want to. Uh, uh, they texted me uh, in, early in the morning said, it'd be really great. Could you come in for nine o'clock and spend some time chatting to us? So, absolutely. Hour and a half later, after spending an hour and a half in this place, it was one of those moments. I got an email like, thank you. That was really helpful. There were people clearly being thing. I could not have done that if I had crammed my diary. Does that make sense? If I had people in there, crammed it, what God had got lined up actually took more time than I would normally have done if I met with someone. And I met with about eight people in one hit. Probably had a bigger impact than me meeting with the one. Does that make sense? And then I came back here, and I, I walked in, and, and as on my way down, I bumped into somebody else who was also, I took one look at them, They said to me, don't ask. In other words, don't ask how I'm doing. I didn't need to ask. I just looked at them, and they broke down. So I then spent time with them. Eventually went to lunch. Had lunch, came back, and then did some stuff in the office and other bits. And then also bumped into somebody else on the street who also equally needed to talk. That would not have happened if my diary was rammed. Does that make sense? Haven't finished yet. Wednesday. I'd arranged to meet uh, 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 somebody from OM, uh, the Overseas Mission Society, somebody I've known for years, and uh, decided to meet with them in Costa Coffee. Walked down to meet with them in Costa Coffee, and I just thought, yeah, we'll have a chat, see if there's anything we can discuss going forward to linking up with them as a church, doing stuff with them, because they do stuff in London, and, and that was the, the idea behind it, you see? So we're sitting there at Costa Coffee, and uh, we're, we're, we're chatting, so I walk in there, I had my clerical on, but I had it undone, because I was trying to not 
I was actually finding it hard to have it done up and I just didn't want to... So I thought, I'll walk in, Costa Coffee will be fine. So we're standing there and what happened was, as I'm ordering the coffee for us both, and I then said to the lady, I said, oh, can we have some milk with it? She hadn't given me milk. She goes, no, I've decided priests shouldn't have milk. No, no, it was a joke. It was a joke. She was laughing. She was just trying to have a bit of banter with me, okay? And I'm like, okay, I had this undone. I didn't think it was that noticeable. And uh, so it was a bit of banter, a bit of laugh, you know, whatever else, great. So we sit down to coffee. Anyway, we're having a coffee, me and my friend, we're talking about stuff. And there was a gentleman there, sort of tip-tapping away on his laptop with his headphones on. Gentleman standing right there. And uh, anyway, we were just about to leave, and he sort of says, oh, he said, sorry, he said, I need to go to the toilet. I'm sorry, okay. He said, do you mind looking after my stuff? And I looked, and I said, yeah. He said, I think I can, and then he saw, and he went, oh, I can trust you, and I went... Little do you know. So, so yeah, sure, mate. But as he spoke, I felt the Holy Spirit just come off of him. Does that make sense? And I thought, oh, that's interesting. So he, he goes to the toilet, returns back. Mate then goes, so then he sits down for a bit and he puts his headphones back on. And I said, by the way, if you get some rude emails back, he said, yeah. I said, that was me sending them rude emails. Don't worry about it. So, so anyway, I thought nothing else of it. My mate goes to the lavatory. He comes back. We're about to leave. We stand up. And the bloke said, excuse me, can I interrupt you? You're, you're, you're clearly a minister and you're clearly Christians. I said, yes. And he said, where do you worship? And I said, well, Greenford Baptist Church, blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh, right. He said, yeah. I'm, um, I said, yourself? And he tells me his story. Just recently married, recently moved into Greenford. And he's a Christian. He had his wristband on. He's full on for Jesus. Goes to a Pentecostal church on, currently on the other side of London. And so we ended up t- chatting because I had nothing else in my diary after that meeting. Does that make sense? So I had this meeting, but I had nothing else really planned afterwards. And uh, we sat, we, we were chatting away, we were talking about stuff working forward, and he's really dynamic. Whole point being is that we then spent another half an hour to 45 minutes with him. Now, normally in my head, I'm sitting there thinking, I've got to get back for. I haven't got time for this. And I want to suggest to you that we all suffer from the same problem. I recognize I have a slightly privilege that my job has that sort of flex, my role here has a bit of flexibility and I'm meant to be out on the streets and all that, I get that. But I do believe we still cram our diaries, our social diaries, our, our, our sitting TV diaries are full. I must get back in time for EastEnders. Oh, nobody watches the EastEnders in. That's good. Coronation Street. I say, well, there you go. See, I must get back in time because if I miss that half an hour program, I am not going to know what's happened. And that's going to ruin the rest of the week for me. Yeah, I watched my mother-in-law's EastEnders recently and I haven't watched it for 20 years. When did Sharon Mitchell come back? It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. Anyway, moving on. So anyway, this is the best bit of the story was, he stands there and he said to me, he said, "Um, I really feel, he said, that it's all right if we pray. Like, yeah. So there's me. I'm clearly a very small, thin chap, aren't I? Barely noticeable. My mate, who is six and a half feet tall, is barely noticeable. This guy was a big bloke as well. He was a nice tall gentleman and, and whatever else, barely noticeable. And we said, yeah, and we said, we said, shall we hold hands? Let's do it. So we're in a circle in the middle of Costa Greenford praying and praying. And we're not, we weren't, yes, Lord, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I just want to thank you. It was like, yeah, and I had a word for him, and he had a word for me, and then, da, da, da. When we finished, we realized the whole of Costa Coffee was dead silent. <laughs> Again. I remember doing it in London in a hotel, I think, last year. Anyway, point being, if, my, if, if, if your diary's rammed, you don't have time for those God-Jesus encounters. Remember we talked about last week, encountering Jesus and encountering each other. If we did not do that, have, and you can't do that if your diaries are rammed. If you don't take time out for God and for people. You have to allow flexibility. Following Jesus, is, to quote a great book at the moment I'm reading, is a lifestyle. 
it's not I'm following Jesus, but what it is is I carry on my normal life and I bolt Jesus on the side. It's actually a lifestyle that you choose to follow Jesus and follow his rhythm and his pattern. Not what the world says and not what you think it should say and somehow try and bolt and fit Jesus in somewhere. It's a lifestyle. Yes, we all have to work. I get all of that. I'm not, some of us might have to travel for an hour to get to work before we even got to work. But you can be talking to Jesus in the process and you don't know who you might encounter on the journey. Plug your headphones in. I can guarantee you're going to encounter nobody. Anyway, we swapped numbers and subsequently he's been WhatsApping me. I know what I've said. <laughs> but it's all been good stuff. Uh, and I, I, I hope and pray that uh, it, it uh, progresses on. So I'm talking about this because I think we need to get this rhythm lifestyle in place. Jesus had it. He didn't rush off. He went with what God was doing. We need to stop having up here this concept that we have to look busy. I, I could tell the story of the senior management that once said to me, Warren, you shoot off at 5.30 every day without fail. I'm, yes, that's right. I've done my job. And I was a manager by this point, but I've done my job. I'm, I'm now going home to my family. And then I'm going out to a church meeting. This was before I was in ministry, obviously. And I'm going home to my family. He said, ah, oh, yeah, but you should hang around for an hour. Why? To look good. Yeah, but I'm not doing anything in that hour. None of us are. He said, yeah, I know, but you should still do it just because it makes it look like you are. You won't progress very far in a company. I didn't want to progress. I wanted to, by that point, I'd convince myself I want to go into ministry anyway. But the point being, we're like that. I need to look good. Who cares? It's God that worries about what we look like, not what about everybody else thinks like what we look like. We're called to be witnesses of Jesus Christ, yes? You can only do that if God and Jesus Christ can witness to you and you witness to them in their life. Does that make sense? So, I'm going to ask you again. How much time did you spend with Jesus this week? Genuinely just sat in his presence, silence, took time out, switched off the phone, focused on him, maybe having the Bible open in front of you and just focusing on that, allowing him to talk to you? If the answer is not very much different from last week and the last few months, I suggest you need to change and challenge yourself. Believe God wants to call us into being people who spend genuine time with him not rushing around like a bunch of nutters trying to look busy. And it's a hard one because we're in a society that says, do this. Right, real quick, because I realise I've gone a lot longer than I wanted to. Real quick, Sabbath. How's your Sabbath looking right now? What is Sabbath? Day of rest, okay? So when's your Sabbath day? Sunday? I don't know. It's not supposed to be anything. That's Martin. Sunday is not meant to be the day of rest. That's a, a, that's a, that's a Western construct. When's your day of rest? Seventh day? Saturday was the Jewish day of rest, but that's because it was the last day in the, in the week. What are you meant to do on Sabbath? Commune with God, rest, sleep, okay? Sabbath comes from sabbat, which means stop. And then this is the next bit. It can also come from the Hebrew version of also and delight. On your Sabbath, who goes shopping for the weekly shop? Who goes shopping? It's okay. You, you can't. You, it's for food and stuff. On your Sabbath day, who goes shopping? Okay. If you're retired, you can find other days to do this in. Who settles household bills on your Sabbath day?
Who does DIY on your Sabbath day? Who catches up with all the jobs that you should have done through the week and you didn't have time for? Yeah, come on. That's basically what I'm getting at is, who does all these things on your Sabbath day? I'm not going to ask you about your emails because you check that every three minutes. Sabbath day is not a day of rest. Bear with me a second. It's better to be classed as a day of reset. It is a day of stopping and delighting in the Lord. Now, the problem is, sorry, I am going to use a quote. I love this. person says, we see that, though, as singing worship songs, intercessory prayer. Do you see what I mean? That's what we think Sabbath is meant to be. It was never designed for that. It was designed to spend time in the Lord and delighting. And you can do that by being with people. You can delight in being together in the Lord. doesn't mean you have to be in prayer. You can delight in having a meal together. You can delight in just resetting your mind and your thinking. Yes, you can have quiet time. You could go to a cafe and just chill. But you're delighting and stopping. You're not allowing your mind to be thinking about all the things that you need to do. A Sabbath day is not a day off. Days off are designed for sorting out the household bills, doing the DIY, doing this, doing that. And I know you're all looking at me right now going, yeah, but Pastor Warren, hello, have you seen what our working life is like? Yes, I've got the same. Ministers are meant to work six days of the week and have one day off. A Sabbath is meant to be a day of delighting, stopping, and being, taking time out, setting the day quietly, not thinking about all the running chores you're meant to do. Now, that sounds awful. But why do you think there's probably so much stress levels in our world today? It's because people don't take time to stop. Why do you think mindfulness has become the new big thing? Why? Because suddenly people realise that you're called to always be on the go and not take a day out each week and stop. Do you want the next best thing? In the commandments, God made the Sabbath holy. Do you know that's the only day in the whole of Genesis that he said this day is holy. It's the only day that God ordained and said this is a time when he stopped, we are to do the same. He said, this is holy. This is when you should stop your work. Did you know that in Deuteronomy, he changed it. He said, you will cease. He actually commanded it. So I want you to think about all the fact that we're talking about the rhythm of life. Really ask yourself the question, do I take a day out to stop? Do I actually do Sabbath? I recognize some of us have got young children and all of that, and I, I get all of that. You know, I once had a young child as well. I have a child, but she's not so young, and she goes and does her own thing. I don't have to look after her so much. Oh, you're here. Hi. Whoops. It's great. She does. Um, she cooks dinner for us as well. It's brilliant. It's great. Um, But there are times that we can somehow fit in, that we take time out and we stop. Believe really for this year, as I said, 2020, we want better vision of God and he wants us to have better vision of him. That doesn't happen unless we learn rhythm. We learn to stop. We stop filling up our diaries of stuff. We allow him to interrupt our lives. We allow him to do things. He wants us to encounter each other. That only happens if we have the space to allow that happen. And do you know something? If we've got nothing to do that afternoon or that day or that evening, great, stop. Spend time with God. Rest. Delight in him. Allow this up here to reset One real last thing. Somebody outside of this church said to me, I said, how are you doing? I said, oh, we were away on holiday over Christmas. By the way, there seems to be a lot of people went away on holiday over Christmas. 
I'm jealous. Anyway, they went away on holiday over Christmas, and they said, we've gone from zero to 200 miles per hour, and I'm struggling to keep at 200 miles per hour. They said, what about you? So over Christmas, I didn't come out of 200 miles per hour. Point being, the fact that we think like that, zero to 200 miles per hour, if you don't come out of 200 miles per hour, I would suggest that your rhythm of life with God is wrong. God ordained Sabbath so that we humans would reset. Take a moment with God for yourself. Lord, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that, actually, Lord Jesus, that you said, take my yoke upon you, for my work is life, my burden is light. And part of what you're meaning there was, if we take you on board, it's about being light. It is about relationship. It's about not carrying a heavy burden that's laid on by man-made rules, but walking this world under your yoke, which was light. Lord, I wanna pray for each and every one of us that we wholeheartedly look at our time sheets, we look at our diary, and Lord, that each of us We recognize that this is your time, therefore we run at your rhythm. So help each of us, Lord, to lift off the yoke that we have put on ourselves or allowed others to put on there and allow us and give us the grace and the time to encounter you in the coming weeks and months. In the name of Jesus, amen. Yep, go ahead, man. A friend of mine, and I think I can mention his name. You probably have met him. Some of you people may have met him. A few years ago, he had to have a cancer operation. Took half his stomach away. And just recently, he's had to have his mum put into care because she can't live with him anymore because she's got... Uh, in, she's, she just doesn't can't think straight for herself anymore. Unfortunately, just recently, he's been told, because he's living in the family house on his own, he's been told that he may have to move, yeah? Which is very unfair for him because he's been blind from birth. He's not like me, where I've not been blind from birth, I know where I'm going, yeah? This week, I gave up time to go and sit with him, yeah? He's not a Christian, I sat there and prayed with him, yeah? He's very, very down about this. They're saying to him that because he's living there on his own, and it's a three-bedroom house, Council saying he doesn't have the, the what's the name to live there because his mum, who's in care, holds the tenancy, and that really hurt me. To think that someone that's lived in this our borough all his life is now being told he may have to move, and I think this is very unfair. As I say, I spent the best part of my time, as you just said, if your diary's not full up, you can go to these people and help them, and that's what I've done, just done. This this Sunday, when I go home, he's going to come over and have dinner with us. Yeah, he needs he needs to be um, you know someone needs to, to try and reassure him that the council have sent him a social worker. They are trying to sort him out, but if they move him to somewhere where he doesn't know, he's got to start his life all over again. And he's telling me if that happens, he won't have any more guide dogs, which is going to cut his independence down. I don't think this is fair. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Well, we we'll pray pray that you will have. Uh, good conversation, God conversation within this afternoon. In the name of Jesus. 
We do hope you've enjoyed and benefited from this presentation. To learn more about what the Bible teaches us and how to apply this to our everyday lives, check out our biblical teaching videos at gbcweb.tv.